effects of a Western diet. Okay, so what about people? Uh, so we did this first trial uh, a number of years ago, maybe five years ago, and uh, so it's a human version uh, of a fasting making diet done uh, once a month for five days. And um, and this is actually uh, some of these studies have been repeated by by groups in China, both the mice and and the and the uh, and the human uh, some of the human studies. Um, and so here you see similar to the mice, uh, the the people that undergone three monthly cycles of five days of the fasting making diet, we see a reduction in body weight, lots of reduction in abdominal fat, waist circumference but no difference uh, in lean body mass, just like I showed for the mice. So the, the muscle mass is maintained. Uh, so fasting glucose, in people they were started with a normal, they were healthy, nothing happened. In people that were pre-diabetic, the fasting glucose drops you know, and returns in most cases to a normal level. Inflammation, systemic inflammation, CRP, uh, nothing happens in those that have normal levels of CRP, but those that have CRP above one, a baseline. Now you see a drop. Cholesterol, a small drop in those that have normal cholesterol, but a much larger drop in those that have cholesterol that is above 200. And blood pressure, again, uh, nothing happens in those that have normal blood pressure, less than 120, but a bigger drop in those that have a high blood pressure. So differently from calorie restriction, this is not causing, you know, for example, blood pressure, remember calorie restriction, it goes from low 110 to lower 90, right? In this case, we don't see that. And that's probably good, right? So it's avoiding going to this very extreme uh, situation that may have bad effects, good effects and bad effects. So here we're starting, I think, to keep only the good effects and getting rid of the bad effects. And so, and you see here, this is another trial with 84 patients. Uh, if we give people a healthy diet, they lose, um, you know, after four months, they lose about three pounds of weight. And after uh, seven months, they lose about five pounds of, uh, not weight, of uh, muscle mass, muscle, uh, lean body mass, muscle and bone mass. But the fasting making diet cycles, after four cycles, nothing happens. And even after uh, three months follow up, no significant reduction in muscle and bone man, uh, mass, right? So this suggesting that it's going after is making the individual much healthier without sacrificing uh, the muscle mass. And uh, so what about people that have uh, prediabetes or diabetes? Of so the normal people, if you look at the H, uh, hemoglobin A1C, which is now used to diagnose diabetes, and nothing happened to those that don't have diabetes. But those that have prediabetes, they see a bigger drop. And those that have diabetes now see the biggest drop, right? So now is now showing signs of uh, regression of diabetes. And, and, and a paper that just came out in, by University of Heidelberg actually confirmed this. They took diabetes, pa diabetes patients that were overweight or obese, and then they gave them um, uh, six cycles, monthly cycles of five days of the fasting mimicking diet. And after the six cycles, you see that there is a reduction of insulin re resistance uh, and, and they had a control. The control diet was a Mediterranean diet that was done for five days, right? So it was either the fasting making diet or five days of a Mediterranean diet. And you see that the Mediterranean, compared to the Mediterranean diet, um, you see that uh, in, in six, six months, about 20% of the patients on the Mediterranean diet increase the medication. Uh, maybe uh, another you know, 45% or 50% had no change and a 30% add a reduction. But if they're receiving the fasting-making diet, no, none of them increased the drugs. Uh, about 30% uh, had no change, and 70% decreased the drug use, right? So this is now starting to look like a, the type of medicine that is not just keeping the diabetes uh, in the same, you know, it's just slowing down the progression, but it's bringing the patient back to a normal health. And same thing here for hypertensive medication, some of them increased, many of them did not change, and some of them were reduced, but this uh, nobody increased, and, uh, and maybe two, three times more people uh, reduced their hypertension, right? So it's working as our original study uh, predicted, both uh, for uh, uh, diabetes and hypertension. Uh, okay, so what about the everyday longevity diet? So what do you eat every day? And so we know that proteins... Uh, increase the level of some of these factors 
that are at the center of aging and the aging process. And so um, the, um, the, uh, um, uh, if you have a high protein diet, these pro-aging factors will be high, their activity is high, and the aging and diseases will be, uh, incidence will be accelerated. So we looked at, uh, um, uh, years ago, we looked at a, um, uh, people in the United States have either a low protein diet or a high protein diet. And, uh, um, and we look at them either before age 65 or after age 65. So before age 65, the, uh, for example, if you look at cancer mortality risk, um, those that had a low protein diet had a much lower, about four times lower risk of developing cancer uh, compared to those that uh, have a high protein diet. So more than 20% of the calories come from protein. But if they were 65 or older, so the 70, 80, 90 year olds, this was not observed anymore. And now uh, the people that had a high protein diet were doing better than the one that had a low protein diet. So now we're starting to introduce the concept of age specific nutrition. So an 80 year old this probably has to eat differently from a 60 year old, different from a 40 year old, and differently from a 15 year old, right? So it's probably at least five, four or five phases of life which require changes in the nutrition. Um, so without go into the details of why, but let's say that the ideal diet, longevity diet, um, considering everything is, uh, um, is uh, um, a, a based on, uh, um, you know, mostly plant-based, lots of legumes, whole grains, vegetables, nuts, uh, no red or processed meat, low eggs, low sugar, low refined grains, but it also has a lot of other factors. For example, low protein until the age of 65, 70 a high nourishment, omega-3s, vitamins, minerals, eating within 12 hours a day, so 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Uh, if overweight, eating only two meals a day, say breakfast and dinner and maybe skipping lunch and having a healthy snack for lunch. And then what I just mentioned, uh, my whole talk, periodically, um, periodic uh, uh, fasting mimicking diet. They don't have to be medically supervised for those that are healthy, but they may have to be medically supervised for those that are not healthy. And I wrote a book on this and... Uh, because it's complicated, there's also a Chinese version of the book, and uh, all the 100% of my profits go to charity and go to the foundation clinics uh, in Los Angeles and Milan. So I encourage you to, uh, you know, be- get the book, the Chinese version, and and um, and read it because I think it takes you through the the all the things that I talked about today, and then. Um, uh, so and this interesting just came out, and this is a, a study from Norway. Uh, back in everything I said in the book, you know, uh, even though we go much further, but they were looking at life expectancy. So just maybe less than half of what I just showed you. And now they're showing if you started it by age 20, there's an extra 13, 11 to 13 years of life expectancy by having a high legume, high whole grain, high nut, low red meat, low processed meat, low sugar, low refined grains, uh, low egg diet, right? And then if you start that at 60 years of age, um, now you get an eight to nine years increase of life expectancy. And this study actually involved China, Europe, and the United States, right? So all three, there's pop- studies from all three places that were considered. So I think it's very relevant also for the, for the Chinese uh, uh, population. And you can pick up the study if you're interested in plus medicine. And this is done by a group again in Norway. Um, so um, yeah, so then with chronological age, as you get older, uh, biological age goes up and disease risk goes up. And then uh, now we're seeing evidence that a combination of the everyday longevity diet and this fasting mimicking diet are able to uh, cause metabolic changes, but also regenerative changes, which lead to reduced risk or, or incidence for diabetes, cancer, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer. So in, in, it's difficult to know at this stage um, you know, prove uh, this, but because we see the risk factors going down, then it's very, very likely that the incidence will also go down. With diabetes, we already know that, that it works, uh, but with the other diseases, of course, uh, uh, we have to wait and see, um, you know, longer studies. Um, and this is all I wanted to say, and I thank all the people that, that in my groups in Milan and Los Angeles worked on, on all of this. Thank you. Thank you for your excellent lecture, Dr. Longo. Now it evokes me some of the questions. May I propose it now? Sure. 
Uh, the first one is, can changing your diet prevent cancer? Yes, uh, no doubt that uh, it cannot prevent all cancers. Some cancers may be viral, uh, may be due to a uh, genetic uh, risk factor like BRCA mutation, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, lots of cancers, probably over 50% of the cancers are probably uh, avoidable or they can be postponed by uh, the right nutrition and the right lifestyle. Uh, so, you know, the diet that I just presented, and if you pick up the book, uh, um, you know, I talk about a lot about cancers. It's one of the major topics, uh, uh, the effects of this uh, nutrition and cancer. So um, in your opinion, that changing our diets, although it cannot um, help us to prevent all of the cancers, but it can help us to uh, aging healthier, which through protecting our immune system or prevent from tumors, right? Yeah, so nutrition, again, can, can help us prevent or reverse diabetes, uh, reverse metabolic syndrome, reverse prediabetes, uh, um, protect us for sure against cardiovascular disease, protects us against a lot of the, the Alzheimer. Um, for example, diabetes now we know is um, almost doubles the chance of developing Alzheimer, right? So if you're diabetic, you almost have a, a twofold increased chance of developing Alzheimer. So this is all connected, right? So the nutrition, the aging process, and all the, the bad diseases that we get, including sensitivity to COVID, right? So this is clearly, um, you know, the ones that are by far at, at most risk were those that were older or had age-related diseases, right? Diabetes, obesity, um, cardiovascular disease, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for answering. The next question is about your book, A Longevity Diet. And the editors of Time High have all read your book, and we found out that you mentioned we have better to eat some of food of our parent grandparents eat. That that means that even if there are some relatively healthy diets, such as uh, I mean Mediterranean diet, it is might not be suitable for all the people. For example, for Chinese people. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So the the idea is not to eat what your grandparents ate if it was bad, right? The idea is to look at the longevity diet and, and, and go to the equivalent that your grandparents ate, right? So maybe the you know, certain population may have had lots of tomatoes, but maybe Chinese grandparents did not have lots of tomatoes, but they had another uh, type of, of, of uh, um, you know, uh, 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 fruit, you know, tomatoes and fruit. So, uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, so that you have to look at the equivalents and, and what was... Uh, um, what was the um, what, what was your what were your grandparents eating in that domain that it, it could be substituting uh, the, um, the the what I describe in the longevity diet uh, maybe in the Mediterranean diet. So, for example, the Okinawans have record longevity and they did absolutely had very little of a, of a Mediterranean diet, right? So, so if you're Japanese or, or from Okinawa, uh, you want to have a um, you know, a, a different type of a longevity diet compared to an Italian, compared to a South American, compared to a Chinese. Thank you for your fascinating lesson and the answers to the questions. I'm already excited to try the fasting mimic diets and I would go back home to ask my parents, what do they eat? Yeah, so, um, you're welcome, you're welcome. The recording is nearly over. Thank you again for squeezing time out of your business schedule to record this course. And no I'm problem. looking forward to your further fruit. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you last call of the day. Thank you for your effort.